Today on The Breakfast, more than 100 Chibo girls are still missing after being abducted by Boko Haram in 2014, and many parents are concerned that the Nigerian government has lost interest in their plight. Also on The Breakfast, Christians in Nigeria join the rest of the world to mark Good Friday to commemorate the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. We also will bring you the latest update in the exciting world of sports. We'll be reviewing the biggest stories, making headlines across major dailies. Good morning to you. This is The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa this Good Friday morning. My name is Justin Akadonye. And I am Mercy Bopo. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Good Friday to you, Mercy. Good Friday to you. Have I ever greeted like that before? Good Friday <laughs> don't, to you. Don't be comical. <laughs> no, it's, today is Good Friday. It's actually a Friday and it's a good one. It is uh, you know, the Holy Week and uh, Mercy, have you been very holy this week? It depends on what you know, holiness is. Holiness, not doing bad things, in quotes. So what is bad things? Things uh, that, uh, that you can, might not be proud of. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about mercy, it's not about us, but it's Good Friday, and Good Friday is uh, the, the day that Jesus Christ um, died uh, on the cross of Calvary. It is a very, very important uh, day in the Christendom. But also, it's been eight years since uh, the Chibo girls were abducted, and after that, over a hundred girls are still in captivity. Remember the sign, bring back our girls, the hashtag that trended, that eventually be became a, a national movement, an international movement, and yet uh, these girls are still in captivity. Some of them, that is, although some have been reunited with their parents. Imagine it being in captivity for just one day. It's like very, very hellish not to talk of being in captivity for eight years. It is a complete trauma, and these girls, they might have been married or they might even have kids as it is. Mercy, it's been eight years since, since the Chibo girls were abducted. And uh, the parents uh, actually had uh, a protest uh, just yesterday. And they say that the government seemingly don't care about the agony. Yeah, it, it's really uh, a very sad, unfortunate incident that has happened. And the fact that government has constantly said they're making efforts to ensure the return of these girls. But the question is eight years after, uh, what is the fate of this, you know, um, girls? It's really very, very sad situation. Very sad. I mean, eight years is a long time. Long time. Now, the, and the question you want to ask is, are these children still alive? Well, at this point in time, they probably would have become adults, depending, I mean, mm. if you look at the age bracket at the time where they were kidnapped. But well, moving forward, you also want to look at the issue of um, the kids and children that have been kidnapped afterwards, uh, the figures seem to be on the high. The statistics is on the high. If you look at the data that's being made available, and it just shows that we haven't really paid attention uh, to what has happened over time. And uh, it doesn't really seem that there's a willpower from side of government. I always say this, once upon a time, we talked about um, the Safe School Initiative. The idea was to ensure that you have perimeter fencing and that, yes and several i mean we're talking about millions and billions of naira that's been spent on that particular though it's been approved and and so um how do you even juxtapose that you know with the reality that uh schools have actually been shut down so it calls for a lot of concern and worry really sad it is really a very sad one because uh, I can only imagine, you know, the trauma that the parents, the families, uh, the relatives, uh, friends of um, these uh, youngers uh, would be going through, you know, eight years. It's, they were, might be looking for some sort of, um, you know, sucker, some sort of relief and um, not knowing what's going on with their children being girls. It is something very alarming. But let's go top to uh, what's trending uh, in Nigeria, in the world, and um, across some um, social media spaces, Afunke Akindele is in the news. But before we get into her, a Twitter a user raises false alarm, and uh, just how far can people go, you know, about um, chasing clout? Uh, uh, she posted a video, or she posted uh, uh, some tweet uh, saying that she was kidnapped, that she, you know, was raped. I even posted, uh, posted. Uh, 
you know, the number of her so-called um, alleged uh, kidnapper. And over time, she now said it was all a hoax. Uh, she was doing that to, you know, chase class. But what we hear, from what we understand, uh, that she uh, is in police custody. Mercy, just how far would people go about chasing clouds? So, uh, first of all, people, uh, we need to understand that the issue of rape, I always say this, I remember a time where it was on radio and then my colleagues would probably want to make, I think it was about this time, mm. the issue of Fato Ibo. Uh, oh yeah, I remember, so yes. Top on the trend. These issues are very sensitive issues. You very, be very sensitive. Very careful when you talk about rape, when you talk about religion. These issues are really very sensitive. And because you have a lot of persons who've actually been abused and a lot's been going on, you just need to be careful how you do all of this. But it's a good one. A lot of persons are saying, we hope that the Nigerian police will be very swift in all the situation because, you know, the swiftness in responding to this is up. But I think that it's very okay. Uh, people need to learn a lesson. So this might just serve as a deterrent. How do you go ahead, whatever the case might be? And you understand the fact that we're in a very sensitive period, a period where there's so much insecurity. So, so, so board. much. A period where we're talking about the issue of rape, uh, we're talking about kidnapping. It's on the Killings hand. And you here can't and there. actually just wake up and put that out. Even though some people are saying, uh, at the end of the day, it was more like I needed to put this out as a way to escape whatever it was, but really, it was actually a deliberate and conscious decision. Yes. Maybe you would have actually put a course, uh, some calls across to uh, f support system that you have. It would include your family, friends, uh, members of your mm -hmm. church, if you attend a church or a mock school, Mosque, or whatever yeah. it is, rather than putting that out. Now, this will constantly make nonsense of the efforts of people who are... You remember a time where the train attack happened, mm -hmm. right? And there was the doctor that died. She tweeted saying, uh, we have been attacked. Under attack, yeah. I've been shot. Please pray for me. Some persons thought that this is so a some joke. Some sort of a hoax, yes. Yeah, people thought it was a joke. How can you be short and then you're still tweeting and typing? It doesn't make any sense. And looking at the comments that was being generated from the particular tweets that uh, she put out, you would also see some persons who are laughing at it because some people say, okay, how are you saying you're being raped and you're being kidnapped at the same time and you have access to your phone? Your phone. And we, you're we need to about understand it. that we're in critical times and these times we need to be very sensitive with the things that we do because you know what this would, this would mean? So at the time where you say the truth, it would be difficult for people to, to because you're making nonsense of it. So if another person now tweets that, oh, I have been kidnapped, how many persons will respond? Some people will think Who that, oh, this is another their joke. Rescue? Because they might think that... So uh, I, I, just I just think that, and if Twitter, it's now, you know, the medium where we can get across, because Twitter is very powerful. I'm saying and social media strict. is very powerful, right? But, you know, that microblogging platform is very, very powerful, and that's why you have Elon Musk on the particular one, and lots going on. But we, we need to be very careful so we don't even you know, make nonsense of everything that's going on. You, you, you could see the response time. You could see, you know, the chat. That's because Nigerians are on top of the issue. People are very alert, the issue of security and all that. And you cannot, you know, joke with a thing like that. I wonder Rape why, I wonder why she would even do that. It's a very serious thing. Yes. So, yes, the fact that, you know, the clubs. men of the Nigerian police force, I mean, she's would be, the police invited her, been, she's been arrested, the issue of false information, false alarm. It's okay. It's, it's very okay. On the other hand, uh, the, the person she visited at that certain address also would also be apprehended or would and have I to ask that question for restraining because one of the issues that she raised is the fact that she's been restrained to leave. So they would also have to answer issues. But like I would say, yesterday we talked about um, some certain sensitive issues and I will say that we need to do better as a people. Let's work on ourselves as human beings and be we better should. people and we understand should. that beyond everything, beyond the fact that you're a woman, beyond the fact that you're a governor, beyond the fact that you're a president and any other thing, you are a human being and you need to be treated with decency and respect. We mm. need to come to the point of humanity and that's the most important thing for yes. me and that's what I think. Well, it is very important. Uh, if we all remember very uh, vividly what happened with some popular um, actor, uh, the, one of them, the cast members of uh, the Empire, when he uh, raised a false alarm, when he talked about uh, being um, a victim of hate crime, how he 
orchestrated the crime and everything, and the police went searching and went digging. You know, time was wasting but why would people resources. Do that? I mean, how can how can how can someone just do that? Really, you know, really, for, really for, bad. for his case, uh, he wanted he was not comfortable with his pay. But this uh, case of um, um Motoyo, see, she actually was chasing cloud. Well, things people no, no, it wasn't, it likes. wasn't that it was chasing cloud. Then what, would you uh, call um, it? what was said was that she visited there, and her visitors were persons she actually visited mm -hmm. didn't want her to leave at the time, mm -hmm. and so it was more like I would have to, you know, make this tweet so I can Why get lie? out. Why lie? We, we can't the necessarily say. But I'm saying that there are other call. options. She would have called, or um, maybe screamed or something if she was not comfortable. No, not necessarily even scream. I mean, if you even had the time. So, because we also, there was, a, there was an audio that was put out, mm -hmm. uh, some response from the brother. As soon as that went viral, you need to understand that the social media is very powerful. And very wide and, and very Twitter, fast. It's, it yes. travels so quickly. So, a lot of people, including uh, members of her family, got mm -hmm. you know that particular tweet and they reacted. They started making calls, putting calls across putting the police. People, you know, and it would you know, really be uh, wrong. It is really wrong uh, that you put out false so, information so, so and give you know false... You just make up some story for whatever it is whatever and then get reason. people to that panic. I mean, you also need to see a video. I don't know if you saw that. The, the mother she... of okay. the mother was crying. Everyone, you know what you have because got a lot was of persons? people making people worry over her. I mean, it's not sometimes people should realize that whatever they do, whatever they say, some decisions they make, it's not just about them. It hovers around them, their family members, their friends, and people who are associated with them. So, so sometimes so, before you take any decision, before you say anything, always be conscious of the people that would be affected by the things that you are doing. Mercy, go ahead. So it, it, it is even, apart from that, you also need to understand how this microblogging, like I said, we're in a very sensitive time, mm. right? It's very sensitive for us as a country. We're grappling with a lot of issue, issues. So you talk about the issue of insecurity. It's on the high. Mm -hmm. We talk about kidnapping. It's something that happens almost on a daily basis across the country. And for someone to put that out on Twitter, it causes a lot of concern. So what you have actually done is you have raised a false alarm. A you have actually made people to believe that this is it. And families, you know, got into action. The family started making calls. The mother was destabilized. Well, the case of Im imagine, mind. imagine that the mother collapsed. You don't even know the health condition Trauma. of the woman. And she collapses because of all of that. If you think that you've been restrained, we just need to do better. For me, I think that as human beings, as a people, we mm -hmm. need to do better with ourselves. We need to just be responsible for our actions. How do you even, how do you even get into a company of people who would mm -hmm not even let you when you say you're about to take a leave and they say you can't take a leave. So, I mean, you, you, we, we need to do better and not even do that. It, makes, it, it doesn't make sense. Now, what would happen if you have someone who is genuinely in trouble or is distressed no, we'll and puts out room. another tweet again and say, it's just I have been kidnapped, would, someone help me. A lot of persons will just think, oh, this is another, mm -hmm. you know, hoax. And yeah. No one will really pay attention. No so, but, but, but at the end of the day, what we're saying is, please, let's be very careful. I mean, careful. Let's also be very cautious. Let's be, you know, very conscious as well with our actions and in our actions. Because at the end of the day, it trickles down to everyone around us. And we're at the time we were trying to save our country from all of the things mm -hmm. that we're experiencing at the time. And it would not be good. But I'm, I'm, I'm really proud, I would say. Whatever it is she has to face, she has to face it. That's it's a good thing that the Lagos State Police has actually uh, said, okay, we're thing. going to mm -hmm. hold down the account of false information. All right. And we're just hoping that, you know, judgment will actually be fair. Whatever punishment will be meted out will be fair. All right, let's move on. Uh, Funke Akindele, uh, or Funke Akindele, the husband, the family, is in the news. JJ Skills, um, uh, ex-wife or alleged ex-wife uh, posted a video warning uh, the act, uh, the uh, the, the actors' uh, family that uh, if you, in quote, mess with me, I'll also mess with you. She actually posted video, uh, a picture rather, of um, the the family of uh, Fuki and Kinele with the twins. You know, for a while uh, she has not revealed um, the identity or the the faces of her children. But uh, someone went ahead to post a picture 
she had come out on social media not too long ago in an interview to explain why she you know, is actually keeping the identity of her children private. She says she is in the news and uh, a whole lot is seen and known about her, but her children are just children and um, they are entitled to their privacy. And when they eventually grow up and uh, would want uh, to say or show or reveal themselves, it is um, left for them. But um, after that um, interview, from what we've seen so far, the, the husband's um, ex uh, posted a picture of the family, she, the husband, and the twins. Uh, after what happened between uh, the, the son, you know, who lived with them for about two years, claiming that uh, what uh, we see on social media is not exactly what is happening with the family, he went on to allege that uh, the marriage is about, you know, hitting the rock. So it's a lot. Uh, some people will say, why are we having this particular trend? If you notice right now, there's a lot that's been brought to the fore. So you have a family. I mean, there might just be someone anywhere, random, uh, random persons or individuals. You just have people anywhere. But at the end of the day, boom, you have information that you are not supposed to have. Prior to this time, nobody knows about anybody's story and anybody's struggle because we understand that life is not perfect. I understand that life is not perfect and you, you can't have perfection. There's no perfect government, there's no, no perfect no, system, we'll have, there's no we'll perfect marriage, there's no perfect workplace. Imperfection surrounds everything and so perfection will just be an illusion. Mm -hmm. But however, I think the social media has actually made it very prominent for a lot of people to bring their cases out so you just have people taking advantage of that oh there's social media is as though almost everyone there's something to be so you bring about. out your issues i mean part, because what, you cannot say that people families steps on once upon a time there's a man and a woman there's a man who left his former wife and he gets married to another woman and then he has stepchildren and something happens stepchildren are really pissed about stepmother and <laughs> <laughs> drama all, all, all around but social media has become very powerful we're, we're in that particular era where technology and you have a lot of developments coming and people are taking advantage of this to put out issues uh, it, it boils down to a lot of people will say, what is the culture for us? What has become our principle? What do we even believe in? It's really difficult to say what it is. But when we expect that if you're a family, a family is very strong. I mean, it's not just something different. That whatever differences that we have, we're able to sort it out without having to bring it to the public. But however, it's in the public. And now people think that, you know, the best way to put out issues is to put, put it out media. in the public. A, and you know, when you put that in the public, you have a lot... Court to sort out all of your no, even if it doesn't necessarily solve that out. But mm. I think that constantly the human nature is wired to get all of that validation and get all of that... Right. Yes, that's, that's, that's how we're wired. We get all of that, oh, okay, so this was really bad. How could she have done this? The validation that we constantly have been wired to want to receive is what we're pushing us. So because you probably may not have people support you, maybe members of your family support the action and different spaces. And then we think that we have a space where we can express ourselves and then we get people who would say, oh, this was really wrong. And then you get all of the supports, you get all of the likes and get people, you know, tilting towards your side and supporting you. And that's it. It's just a human element. But we need to find a way, you know, to control it. It's quite unfortunate these days we're getting information of things that we necessarily did not subscribe to. Things that I mean, all of this information. Of I mean, don't know what to say. So at this point, what do you even now say? It's quite sad because you understand that Funke, Funke recently had talked about the fact that she doesn't want to put out... Um, she talked about the reason why she doesn't want to put out the pictures of her children. She, or she doesn't want to reveal their identity. Now, on the other hand, you, <laughs> you have someone who's put out the picture. And I know a lot of persons here, including you, I know you zoomed the picture. You wanted to see the face of these children. Why has she been keeping them away from it's all the of The fact them? that this, this, but this it's just, it's that they are kids and they are kids. And um, if you're sorting out all the issues that you have, uh, baby, mama, drama, issues within the family, stepchildren and all of that, don't bring, don't bring children into the conversation because they are just kids. Uh, if you want to sort out your issues, sort it out amongst yourselves and don't, because so, at the so, end of the day, so it, it would necessarily, it would necessarily not be, so I'm, I'm not there. I really don't understand what happened. As much as we will probably get stories from different parties, but you also need to understand that when people are hurt, People are hot and then we want to go to, you know, any extent and to get the back these are the children as what? So it's more like vengeance? we need to get revenge. And she understands the fact that Funke has been very, very 
um, particular about putting the identity of, of her children out there. Recently, I'm not mistaken, I think just recently, there's also, you know, that report and post where she talked about the fact that I can't put out my, the reason why I constantly have to yeah. let my kids not be out there. And so they understand all of this and put it out and, you know, boom, it's what it is. But like I say, we need to be better humans. We need to do better as a people. We also need to understand that as long as we exist as human beings, there will always be conflicts. We just need to find a way to resolve all of this. But that's the much we can take this morning on Top Trending on a Good Friday, by the way. I hope these issues have been very good, but we'll definitely return on Monday with more interesting conversation topping the charts across different parts of the country. Now we'll take a break. When we return, the show continues right here with our paper review. Stay with us.